until you've known the love of God. I want to minister to you this morning about happy, and I added a question mark. I want to ask you, are you happy today? Amen. I'm, you may not be when I'm done with you, but come talk to me. I love on you anyway. Um, we at our house have a saying, and I think we used it with our kids and our grandkids. Sometimes in the mornings, I'm a severe, serious morning person. Our children were not. And uh, our grandchildren really are not. Well, a couple might be. But I always say to them, it takes us a little while to find our happy face in the mornings. Sometimes some of us have to stumble past the coffee pot before we find our happy face. Anybody in the house have that issue in the morning? So when the grandbabies are all here, um, I do this thing to torment them in the mornings. Because I'm the grandma and I can. And then I send them home. How many of you have an Alexa at your house? I have an Alexa daughter-in-law. Do you want to talk about things get confusing? Uh, anybody have an Alexa or a music thing at your house that says stuff for you? Okay. So if the grandchildren are there and they're all there, especially we have to put people in the living room on the floor to sleep. And the, it's just a lot of grandbabies. And as I start waking everybody up, I have Alexa play staying alive. <laughs> I could do that, staying alive. Come on. It wakes them up. And then they're like, stop. And then they start yelling commands to Alexa, you know. But um, let's get real. Not every moment in life is easy and good. But there is no reason for a believer in Jesus Christ to not be happy in Christ. Amen. I'm going to give you scripture. I'm going to prove my case before the court today. I want to give you scripture. Uh, Psalm 146 verse 5 says this to us. And it says, Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Amen. Father, I bring this before you today, Lord, and just help our hearts and minds to, uh, to, to glean something from this, that we live a lifestyle that's pleasing to you, Father, and that we recognize where our happiness comes from. Give us that today, I pray in your name. Amen. So it says that he, he happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. That's us. If we are believers in Christ, if you have confessed Christ as your Savior, you should be happy in the Lord this morning. Amen? Proverbs 3.13 tells us this. It says, Happy is the man that findeth, findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. And these are just confirmations, and this was some scriptures the Lord had just put in my heart and mind, and I begin to build a sermon for today for us. I want us to analyze our lives and to analyze ourselves, not our neighbor, not who we think we want to analyze, but are you happy this morning? Okay? And if I need to come by your house and play staying alive, I can do it for you. <laughs> Amen? Are you happy? See, our true success doesn't come from the things that surround us. Sometimes we gauge success on the house we live in, the car we drive, things that are tangible. Um, I don't know if men do this, but us girls, sometimes uh, we do shopping therapy, <laughs> and it makes us happy until you get home and realize you just paid what for that and you don't really like it. Anybody? I know you guys don't do that. Listen, that's not our happiness. Our happiness comes from God alone. Amen. It comes from God alone. Our true success comes with the joy of knowing and following God. That's where true happiness comes from, is knowing and following God. Living how he asks you to live brings happiness into your life. When you begin to follow his commandments and you begin to follow God's plan for your life, it doesn't mean that your days are every day's easy but there is happiness to be found in that day. Amen? And if you've got the grumbles, I'll tell you, there's people look around that would trade place with you in a heartbeat for what you're grumbling about. Amen? So we want to know that where our true success comes from. It's the joy of knowing the Lord, knowing God, 
And it's living how he asks us to live. That's where it brings us our happiness. Amen? Happy. Uh, just a quick di uh, dic dictionary definition is showing pleasure or contentment. And I want to be content in Christ. I want to, God to see that I love him and that I honor him and that I choose his way for my life over my way for my life. And that's where my happiness will come from, is with my peace with God. It's not going to come from the other things that we, we chase after. Any, I love to ask you guys questions, and I like the looks on your face. I think we should have a camera that pans this <laughs> way. Um, how, many of you <laughs> how many of you have ever chased happiness? In all the wrong ways. Did it? Did you? When you got there, was it there for a season? I, I'm being honest. I'm, go, I'm being honest. It may have been for a short-lived season. It made you happy for a minute, maybe even a little longer. But then the reality hits in. It's just something. It's not the peace that comes from God this morning. I want us to know how to be at peace with the Lord this morning. That's where our true happiness is going to come from. Turn with me to 1 Timothy, if you have your Bible, the 6th chapter, 1 Timothy 6, and we're going to read verses 6, 7, and 8. And there's some scriptures here, and uh, I just like what they say to us. I like what they remind Connie to do in her personal life. Not, I'm not exempt from needing to remind myself of why and what makes me happy. We were with our family, um, Memori is it Memorial Day weekend? Is that what we all just survived? Yes, Memorial Day weekend, and it was wonderful, and they make me happy, but do you know that's not where my happiness comes from? It comes from when I lay my head on my pillow at night, I'm at peace with God, and he just blesses me with these other things that give me happiness, amen? In 1 Timothy 6, 6, 7, and 8. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us therewith, let us be therewith content. Amen. This is the key and the sign of true spiritual growth. Is when you can reach a place that you are content with Christ. You're not content because of your surroundings. You're not content because of your collections. You're not content because of the stuff you've acquired. And any of us over, I always give myself a big lead wave. Any of us over 40. Um, <clears throat> we've collected some things over the years. Now, the things that I collected so diligently, and I don't say this in any, if you're in the collecting phase, <laughs> They mean nothing to me anymore. I like them. There's certain things that was my mom's. It brings me happy memories. There's certain things that I've collected. But you know what? My contentment alone comes from Christ. We had a, a lovely, godly couple in our church in Bridgeport. Um, they were much older than us, and we loved them dearly. And uh, she was my piano player. She played the piano for us. And they had a, traveled the world for his career, and they had many, many collections, very valuable collections of stuff. But they had stuff, but stuff didn't have them. Did you hear that? Okay. And one day, her and I are going down the road, and we were talking about some things, and she said to me, you know, I've never seen a hearse pull in a U-Haul. <laughs> and at the time, I was like, ooh. See, godliness is where our contentment comes from. It's not our possession. It's not the things of this earth. That scripture, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. I don't want to be cumbered trying to carry some things. I want to be free in Christ, and I want to be happy with my freedom in Christ. Amen. And I'll just tell you, if you're a, this means I'm editing. If you're a sour-faced Christian, don't tell them you go here. That's true. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants to be around it. But when they see true, genuine happiness in your life, even when you're facing hardship, even when you're facing disappointment and you're facing hurt, 
They are going to want what you have. And your happiness is in Christ. That's what they want. That's what this world needs. The definition of content is a state of happiness and satisfaction. Amen? A content baby won't fuss all the time. When it's content, it'll rest. It'll nap. Mom and dad get to rest. Amen? We, I've had both. I've had content babies and, and colic babies. But see, we want to learn how to be content in Christ. Why? Because that's the key to our success as men and women of God today is being content in Christ. Turn with me to Philippians 4. We're going to read a couple of verses here. Uh, Philippians 4. We're going to read verse 11 through 13 this morning. And if you came here happy, I'm thrilled. If you came here not happy and you leave happy, I'm really happy. I want you to know who you are in Christ, and I want you to be free, and I want you to live a happy and a content life in Christ this morning. Amen? Sometimes it requires that we lay aside some things. Amen? Sometimes we have to lay aside some things in our personal lives. And we have to focus and put our priorities for Christ first. Amen. Okay, Philippians 4, 11 through 13 says this. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned, in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound everywhere. And in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Verse 13, we all know this one. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Amen. That is where our happiness and our contentment comes, is through Christ alone. There's no happiness in any other thing. You're going to have temporary pleasures, but true happiness. And I hope when you hear the word happy or you think of the word happy, I hope you think of it differently from today forward. I hope that you don't think of it as a temporary condition, but that you think of it as a way, a lifestyle to live before God. Amen. To be content and to be happy with Christ as the center of your life. See, we draw from God's power. Aren't you grateful for that? Aren't you grateful that we draw from a power source that cannot be depleted? We draw from a power source that has never been taken down or defiled. We draw from the power source of the one true living God this morning. We need to be seeing things God's way. Amen. Amen? And when you learn to begin to see things God's way, there's a happiness in your soul that will overtake you if you'll allow it. There's this cartoon, I just thought of this, there's a cartoon our kids used to watch. I don't even know what it was about. But these little guys running around this little town and they say, I don't want to be happy, I want to be sad. I don't want to be happy, I want to be sad. And then somehow the sunshine made it into the cartoon and shined in and they were like, ooh. We encounter some people that don't want to be happy. And I'll just say, let your little light shine. Amen. <laughs> You're not good. You can't make someone happy. And as much as I love Dale and I will celebrate a few years of marriage this summer, and it was going to blow my theory out of the water, that over 40 business. <laughs> We're going to celebrate 47 years of marriage in August. And I'd lie to you if I said every day has been happy. It's the real world. It is not Dale's responsibility to make me happy. It is not your spouse. It's not your neighbor. It's not your employer. Do you know who's responsible for your happiness? You. And you best get real. Now I'm not being nice. <laughs> I always, you, if I pause, I'm editing. You know that, okay? <laughs> I need each and every one of you in this building today to get real before God and seek out a happiness that this world cannot rob you of. This world will rob you of your happiness. And if you've worked in the public, Nancy, the public, the, your customer that's always right, can rob you of some happiness if you allow it. But see, what we have to do, we have to do what God wants us to do in our lives, not what we want, like how we feel. Amen? 
How, how many of you have gone by feelings? It's got, it gets you in trouble. We don't go by how we feel. We go by God's plan for our life. Because our emotions are up one minute, down the next, sideways, inside out. Anybody? Anybody? Come on. We don't live by that. If you do, you're going to be just tossed to and fro. You're going to be in turmoil. We live by what God's design for us is to be. And when we can get into that position of living how God's designed for us, what he has for each and every one of us, each individual, when we can get into a place with that and not go by how we feel, we're going to experience true happiness in Christ. Amen? We're not based on our emotions or our feelings. But where this true happiness in our heart lies is it's in our priorities. Anybody had any priority adjustments in your life recently? I have them daily. Because if I get a bad attitude, i got to double check my priority. What's my priority is to please God. Simple enough. That's not hard. That's good homework. You each go home this week and put your priority is that, you know what, I'm just going to please God. And I can guarantee you, happiness will chase you down. You will be happy because you're living in right standing before God. Do you believe that this morning? I believe this with all my heart. And I'm not, um, I wasn't a cheerleader in school. I had no, is there any cheerleaders here? Sorry, ladies. Oh, Nancy. <laughs> Oh, rah, rah, rah. Come on. Listen, I wasn't that. I was just not. But it's needed. There was a purpose that you guys had. It was to get people. So I guess I'm your personal cheerleader at United Fellowship this morning. I want you happy. Okay? I want you happy. When things are falling down around you, your happiness is based on Christ alone. And I want to see each of you live happy lives. Not fake mask, but happy lives that only comes from a priority in Christ. Amen? Do you believe you can do that this morning? I'll be hugging each cheerleader after the service <laughs> and telling you how much I love you. There was nothing wrong with them. I love you guys. Have I encouraged you? Do you know how to leave here today and be happy? Okay, it's not what you're going to drive away here in. It's not even what we're going to have for lunch. Your happiness is in Christ alone. Amen. God bless you.